Welcome to Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. My name is Mumpulu Kiluruma Mohobe. Our objective is to enthuse, inspire, energize, and empower entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs of all stripes here in BW and beyond. We do so by inviting these entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs into our makeshift studio. Sometimes we call them to the restaurant, sometimes we go uh, to our studio and we ask them to share their experiential knowledge, their experiences and their expertise. And we ask them uh, as many questions as we can aimed at empowering you also as a viewer. Hello dear viewer, dear listener. My name is Mumpuli Kiluruma Mohobe. Welcome to another episode of Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. Uh, we are obsessed in this show about personal development and I've uh, brought you a personal development impresario, personal development expert. He lives, breathes and uh, drinks personal development <laughs> and uh, he will introduce himself in greater length. Let me welcome you to the studio, Mr. Saidi Mdala. Yes. Um, would you care to introduce yourself to the v viewers and the listeners? Tell them what you're about and what your vocation is. Thank you so much uh, for the very glowing <laughs> introduction. That <laughs> <laughs> was very kind of you. Thank you. Um, I would like to first of all appreciate this program. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been following it for a bit and uh, you really are doing a great job. Thank you very and much. It's something that uh, it's, it's, it's creative, it's, it's, it's you putting us out there. It's, it's a very I'm big very deal for us. I'm very fortunate to have a great team. Yes. <laughs> uh, the team that makes it happen. It me. did. Mm. Yeah. And uh, I'm very privileged and, and humbled to be on this, uh, on this program. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, secondly, about myself, before I was born, my grandmother, and because I'm the second of six children, so my paternal grandparents were in line for naming the next child. So obviously, uh, if I was going to be born a girl, my grandmother would uh, carry the day if, if I was going to be a boy. Unfortunately for my grandmother, I was born a boy <laughs> and uh, my grandfather won. Mm. My grandfather's first name was Saidi. And Saidi is Arabic for, loosely translated as say or, or chief. Uh, we just call it here, right? Yeah. Yes. So, so you're chief. Will just say, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> you don't even have to call me yeah. Mr. Saidi because it's, mm. it's Mr. Mr. Yeah. So it's the same thing. Okay. Yeah. But our family name is Mdada. And in terms of um, my profession, I am a trained journalist and uh, I have practiced a bit, done precisely everything there is to do in the, in the media fraternity. But my calling is in personal development. My passion is in personal development. And that's what I do now, and that's what I've been doing for the past five years. I, I have been doing personal development coaching, instructional designing for the personal development coaching. I've been writing books. I've written uh, six books so far, and I do also inspirational speaking. Over and above that, I'm a parent to two beautiful girls, Miriam and, uh, and Asia. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am also an active citizenship. I'm an active citizen uh, with uh, three organizations, very active with three organizations, Junior Chamber International. I'm, um, a, I'm a patron of that one. Is that so? Uh, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. 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 I'm also with um, Youth Empowerment Society Botswana. They are into tuition. And we also do a uh, uh, nationwide readership campaign with a lady called Poshe Chipalaza Tobeza. It's called the, the PCT National Re uh, Readership Campaign. So at a personal, uh, on a personal note, that's, that's who I am. But um, in terms of uh, what I do and who I do it with, I am with Game Changers. I'm a co-founder with a company called Game Changers. It's a local company. Game Changers Media. Game Changers Media, yes. It's a local company and uh, we co-founded it together with a lady called uh, Kutrano Tina Musime. She's also formerly journalist and uh, you know, she's coming from the broadcasting section. Yeah, so mm -hmm. we've been working together and uh, we've been able to do a lot of exciting things. The driving philosophy for our organization as Game Changers is to give people maximum advantage. And uh, they, we'll talk about that as we go. But basically what we're looking at is we're looking at being the organization that helps cultivate 
global enterprising active citizens. Okay. Like we touch somebody, you drop them anywhere in the world, they hit the ground running. Tell me about the authorship side of, uh, of, of Game Changer Media, because I see that you've authored a total of five books. Yes. I wouldn't be surprised if you have one and uh, under production at the moment because mm. you seem to be a prolific author. Exactly. Tell us about the authorship aspect of your business. Yes. The authorship aspect of our business is actually hinged in what we do. Most of the purely personal development books, like uh, the first, second, third, and fourth books. Uh, the first is this, Loser Seminar. Yes. The and second, the second one is what Know What is Matters. Know What Matters. Yes. And the third one? one is Access to Plenty. It's uh, out of print. Access to plenty. Yeah, yes. it's out of print. And mm. uh, the, the, the third one, uh, the fourth one is Charm Your Audience. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, those ones are written from the programs Sorry. that we offer. We have two key programs. Our flagship programs are two. We have uh, a speech coaching program called Executive Speech Coaching. And then we have our main program, our flagship program is called A Foot in the Door. This is the one on which everything that we do is anchored. Before we talk about your philosophy, um, what was the turning point for you? What, what sparked this interest in personal development? Was it like me, a, a cataclysmic event? Or was it like me, a, a, a realization that where you are heading is in the wrong direction? It was, um, it was an epiphany, but it was not very dramatic. Mm. I, I was working like, I had gone in circles for the longest time. I was 34 years old, I remember very well. It's a very important number in my life. Mm. <laughs> so I was working as a receptionist. And this gentleman comes through and he is doing uh, culture transformation for the organization I was working for. So everybody was supposed to attend, so he could get us up to speed on what it really meant to transform. And on day number two, he speaks about something very important. He said, you know, you need to have a philosophy. You can't just go through life without a philosophy. And I'm thinking to myself, my God, I don't have this. What is it all about? So he talked about purpose. He talked about a number of other things. But as he spoke about it, I, I really felt that he was in a very big way speaking to my situation. Because one of the things that he mentioned was that if you don't have it, you're not going to be the person you were meant to be. And I was looking at myself. I was smart. I was not the smartest guy in the room, but Good I was looking, smart. Good looking, every reason to, uh, succeed, yeah, to succeed, to coach your yeah, I was going in circles. Mm. And so I said uh, to myself, I need to take this guy seriously. So I started working on it, but because I was doing it on, on my own, it took me about six years to really figure out what exactly I was about. Once I got that, oh my God! It you never looked back. Just like, yeah, it was. Of course, you are you are, you are alluding to something that Jim Rohn talks about. Yes, he says it's never about the economy, it's never about the politics, it's never about the culture. It's about you and your philosophy. Exactly. If your philosophy changes, everything, everything changes. changes. That's yes. true. Everything How, to what extent has Jim Rohn impacted you? In a very big way. I would like to say that everything that I've done in my career, like everything that Jim Rohn has done is part of everything that I'd like to do. Mm. Uh, maybe I'll do something a little bit more if I've exhausted what he's done. But mm. he's my role model. I've listened to virtually everything that uh, is on the, on the domain. Mm. And I've also read, I think, seven eight of his books. I am a very big fan. He's had a very big influence in my life. And when I looked at him, I said, this is a guy who's doing exactly what I would like to become. All right, let's yeah. get to, to today's business. Yes. Let's start with the game changers uh, model of personal development. Yes. Can you define it and then explain it? Okay. So when you look at um, at, uh, at the world, uh, figures are something, numbers are something that that is that are very important to personal development. So as a personal development agent, mm -hmm. the greatest number that is important to me is what is the global population, right? So once that is done. I, I, I get to get another other numbers. Mm -hmm. But the other numbers that you start looking at now, the, the popular ones, you have unemployment. Mm -hmm. Plus or minus 200 million on the last count. And with COVID, I think it really has spiked. Worldwide, you mean? Yeah, oh, worldwide, yeah, yes. Yeah. And 70%, uh, uh, I mean 70,000 from, from among those ones are young people. Mm -hmm. And these young people, most of them have gone You're talking to about Africa? 
globally. Globally, okay. Globally, it's, mm. it's a global thing. Mm. And when you look beyond that, you look at also issues to do with extreme poverty, 690 million last count. Mm. Issues to do with hunger, it's, it's, it's encroaching on to 730 million. Mm. Issues to do with floods, issues to do with climate change. These are supposed to be big problems. Mm. And obviously, your United Nations and stuff, they are always dealing with these issues. Mm. But when I look very closely to it, us at Game Changers, when we looked at all these numbers, we said the most important number, number one, nobody is interested in it. Number two, nobody is talking about it. Mm. And number three, it's so, so big. It's the only number that goes into billions. And we are talking about population 7.9. It's around 7 billion, 7.1 billion. And that's the number of people that are just floating through life without a personal philosophy. 7.1 billion yes, um, out of 7.9. Exactly. Um, Basically the being vast majority. It's a vast majority. It's like one, uh, 9 in 10 people. How I did just, you get uh, to that number? It's very easy. You, you, you want to experiment, you just walk down the street, ask 10 people, where do you see yourself 80 years from now? Mm -hmm. They think you probably smoked your socks or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Yes. 80 years, what are you talking about? I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> some will say that. Yeah, some will some say it doesn't yeah, matter. It doesn't matter. Some will say, what do I even have to think about that? I mean, there's COVID. If, if, uh, if this doesn't get me, there's something else is going to get me. <laughs> so it's a very big problem. And it's even bigger for a lot of young people because they go into, without the philosophy, they go into college and do courses. They did not subscribe for somebody chooses them for them. It's mm. either their parents or their parents or mm. both. Mm. And then they end up stuck in some organization doing some creepy job they mm. don't like, working with people they don't like, you know, organizations mm. that they think suck every day. So mm. it's hell for them. Mm. And, and, and when we, we looked at that at the beginning of, because we were looking at what problem should we address as an organization in personal development because it's, it's wide. And we realized that the biggest problem there was was the most basic, the most fundamental aspect, which was people simply don't have an idea mm. what their philosophy of life is. And that was a crisis for us. Mm. Yeah. Um, number two, why personal philosophy? Because, because of a number of issues. Number one, if you don't have it, you don't have a direction. You're not going anywhere, you're going in circles. So that's the first thing you find somebody that is very smart, even a professor that is very smart, been teaching for the longest time, and you are saying, but why are you not striking out on your own? Mm. Why are you not writing books? Why are you not giving speeches? If you've been doing this thing for 30 years, surely there's You're a lot that you want to talk yeah. about. Mm. Why don't you want to share with others? Mm. And they don't even have an idea there's that kind of opportunity. Mm. So if you don't have a philosoph philosophy, you don't have options. Your, mm. your, your options are limited, they are limited to what is available. You okay. are waiting for the next budget speech, you are waiting for the next sauna, for the next election, and, and unfortunately those things don't change anything for the individual. Not much. Unless you change your philosophy, your direction doesn't change. Okay. So you don't have a clearly defined life, and this is life. I mean, mm. when you plan to go to the shops, you, 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 I'm going to buy this and I'm going to take this road. But mm. life is very important, we just up and go. So without a philosophy, it's really, really tough for anybody to become who they are supposed to be. You don't have a purpose, you don't have a direction. You your don't first have anything book, that you like. Your first book is an interesting title. It says okay. Loser's Seminar. Exactly. Um, if I were to read this book yes. uh, in the context of what is personal philosophy, its definition and its importance, what will I learn? I think here you're talking about your particular experience. Yes. What will I learn from this book? What you will learn from this book is how much we lose how much we lose also because of the, the same problem. There are many other issues at hand, but, but again, it, it, it goes back to personal philosophy. For me, uh, this was a, a response to a direct challenge by Jim Rohn. He said, unfortunately, we don't have losers coming to seminars like this and talking about the experiences. Mm. Could have been useful. So I thought about it later. I'm like, mm. but I could write about this. Loser seminar. So, yeah. everybody, loser seminar. Yeah. <laughs> so what somebody expects from this is um, whatever age people are at, it's how much you can lose out in life if it's not clearly defined, mm -hmm. if it's not, if you, if you haven't taken a deliberate approach to this is how I'm going to live my life. So that's the biggest thing that, uh, that, that you can learn from there. Mm -hmm. I think I've discussed about 11 points mm -hmm. in the book. 
and uh, as you can see uh, issues like uh, letting opportunities pass for school there are people that are really really smart they can you know uh, balance school and everything else but they will give you an excuse i'm not doing this because i'm school mm -hmm. i'm not doing this because i need to finish college mm. and then you say but you you can this is an opportunity it's big you can take it and run with it and then and then finish college mm. uh, or do both yeah or do both mm. and it's a false choice people do, it's your choice it's a but false choice yeah, choosing between yeah, school choosing and between my school, opportunities yes. can have both can have both mm. and at the end of the day what do people choose they choose to forego the opportunity and later on now they finish school they want a job so dude you had an opportunity to create a job and you let it go mm -hmm. so there are a number of things some people are not disciplined it's one of the biggest things that a lot of people struggle with obviously mm -hmm. if you don't have a personal philosophy it's difficult to discipline yourself mm -hmm. so you just do whatever comes to mind if you don't have a value system if you you don't have something specific mm -hmm. that you'd like to become you want to just become anything. Let's, let's shift to the positive and then ask you specifically, Saeed Mdala. Yes. What is your personal philosophy? Can you articulate it clearly? Exactly. And tell us how you've applied it specifically. Yes. Um, I am living my personal philosophy. My personal philosophy is also, I, I just lent it to the organization that we run. It's also to give, my purpose is to give others personal, uh, maximum advantage. Mm. And uh, my my my... My, my, who I am, my, my vision, mm. even uh, people would remember me a thousand years from, na from now mm. as a personal development agent, inspirational mm. speaker, mm. And, 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 and coach and author. Mm. Those are the things that like, really uh, determine my life. Mm. That's my direction. That's where I'm going today, mm. 10 years from now, 100 years from now. Mm. 2,000 years from now. Yeah. That's what people are going to remember me as. Yeah, yeah. And what do I do every day to make sure that I am going in this direction? My mission in life is to create easy to use learning solutions. It could be Easy books. to use learning solutions. Exactly. And they mm. have to be very dynamic. Mm. They have to be exciting. They have to be fun. Uh, every time before I start a coaching session, I say we are here to have fun. But if we learn something, it's a bonus. Mm. So. It's, that's the approach. Mm. That's, that's what I do every time. I worry about, there's a problem. How do I create an, an, an interactive, exciting, dynamic mm. solution for that? So we write books, we do speeches, and uh, now we have gotten to start writing books about individuals that we think have done something extraordinary, individuals that we consider game changers. Mm. Yes, I, I'll talk about uh, game changers, the game changer model mm. shortly. But, uh, and my value system, naturally, because of what I do, I have to be a lifelong learner. Mm. The second value is, uh, is I have to be creative. If you're dealing with people, if you're dealing with what really matters in life, in the lives of people, you have to be creative. And lastly, Two years ago, I, yeah. I, I got my people together and started talking about this game changers yes. philosophy, how we should uh, be energized, yes. how it's important that we do not uh, uh, victimize ourselves by being complainers, mm -hmm. why we should be action oriented and not just talkers. Yes. Um, how do we practicalize that? Because it's very easy to say it. Yes. And often you find the leader, somebody like you, highly motivated yes. and understanding the philosophy. Yes. How do you inculcate it in your people and to what extent have you succeeded in your organization, uh, Game Changers Media? The, the first thing that, uh, the first component that is very important, the first factor is it has to be simple, stupid. It really has to be simple, stupid. Everybody must understand it and be able to interpret it in their own way. So what we did when we, we created the Game Changer model is we, we divided it into four quadrants. And uh, we said you, it's, it's, it's a journey. Ideally, you graduate through the, the, the quadrants, mm. but in, in life, you could start from any, any quadrant. So the first quadrant, if we're taking it like uh, in, the, in the ideal way, the first quadrant is academic excellence or intellectual excellence. So what we are looking at here is we are saying if you really want to become somebody in life, you need to pursue academic excellence or intellectual excellence. And when you talk about that, people think it's a big thing, but it's not. We have simplified it with basically ability to read, ability to count, and ability to write. Mm. And those are the things you need, literacy and numeracy. What does that give you? It gives you the ability to make out options. If you can read one word, if you can read 10 words, if you can read 1,000 words, your thinking is developing. 
you're building a vocabulary, and vocabulary is a way of thinking. Mm, mm, and mm. thinking is where everything gets out of freedom, success, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the same with counting. Mm -hmm. A person who can only count up to 10 has got a big problem when they face, when they're faced with, uh, you give them a million bucks, mm. they're going to blow it off until they come to 10. Now they're going to start <laughs> making sense of it. It's okay, 10, I'm familiar with this. <laughs> yes. So it's, it's, it's value. Because values. their mindset says, this is where you're This is where you are. Mm. So the more you know, the more, so it's readership, it's mm. counting, it's getting excited in numbers. Mm. You don't have to become a meth whiz. Mm. You don't have to become like, you know, the, 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 the A-star kid. Mm. You just have to be able to read and read and read and read. And history tells us that all the people that have been successful, there's one common denominator, readership, avid readership. Mm. So that's the first thing. So when you're able to read now, you can see differences in what life can be like. So mm. it graduates you to the next quadrant, mm. which is leadership. Leadership, we have simply described it as creating possibilities or alternatives. And when you're there first, you create alternatives for yourself. And when they work, you look around you and say, who, who is a situation like I had? Mm. And you help them also. But possibilities, people don't use possibilities. They, they don't buy possibilities. They want solutions. Is there a distinction here? Yes. You mentioned academic excellence and intellectual I, excellence. It's is, there, is there a distinction? It's basically the same thing. Academic is with particular reference to like when we're going into schools. Mm. Yes. And intellectual when we're dealing with, with the general pop, uh, population, you know, any Life other person, general, right? Yeah. Yes. Mm. But it's basically all hinged in the ability to use your, your, your thinking. Uh, mm. uh, uh, prowess to make sense of your life. Mm. So from like I was saying, the second quadrant is leadership. Now you've created possibilities, but people don't eat possibilities, don't use possibilities. No, you can't eat them. <laughs> yes, somebody has got to create solutions. Mm. So the ability to transform possibilities into solutions, entrepreneurship mindset, mm. that's the third quadrant. So we are saying, you know, you know what needs to be done, now you have to try and do something. Execution. Yes. Mm. So you do that, you sell, you become successful, and people buy your product and everything and stuff like that. But mm. we always have a problem. There are certain people who need your product but can't afford it. Mm. So the fourth quadrant comes in, active citizenship. You have to find a way to bring it to J them. Just free. help me um, yes. rewind a little bit if mm -hmm. I can double click on that. Yes. Quadrants are four. Yeah, the quadrants Can you are take four. us through all four of them? Both One four. is what? One is academic excellence or intellectual excellence. We covered that, yes. yes. Leadership, that's mm -hmm. number two. Yes. Yes, uh -huh. there's possibilities. And uh, the third one is entrepreneurship mindset. That's where you're turning possibilities into solutions to sell. Yes. Now you can sell your, your money and stuff like that, but you can spare a little bit of time out of running this big empire that you have. <laughs> you can spare this time to sit and say, okay, yeah. let's talk about something and bring it to the people for free. Mm. People who need it, people who would never have the opportunity either of meeting you or maybe me. Mm. And they are able to see that now because we have been able to spare our time and talk about it. So that's active citizenship. Mm. We are using whatever resources we have. That's to, number three. That's number four. Number four is yes. active citizenship. So, yes. We've got them, yeah. so a person who combines all those four, we mm -hmm. consider that person a game changer. If you have three, you're on your way to becoming the book. When you have all the four and they are active, we can see that's that's our idea of a game changer. You've uh, you've written books about two such people. Yes. Uh, without blowing uh, their trumpets too much. Yes. Would you tell us why you considered Kenneth Karanja a game changer? You've written a book, Harnessing yes. Opportunities, mm -hmm. and why you consider what's the other gentleman's name? My medicine Cracking man. it, yes. a game changer in the sense you've described. Yes. Because that will also lead to our next point, which is to do with purpose. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, the, the the biggest thing that that I picked from these people is that they sort of like really capture our game changer model. They, they started from wherever Let's they started. Let's start from. with this one. Yes, first. we're going to start with. So, Kenneth had a lot of problems with education and he failed, 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 failed. By the time he finished uh, high school, he was 21, 2021, 20, and he failed to go to university. But he had a dream. And dream is also another synonym for vision. He wanted to do well in life, he wanted to become something different. Mm. And he moved from a village, a very poor village, one of nine children, and Fast forward 30 years later, he's running a learning institution. This is a kid that failed dismally in mm. school. This one? Yes. Mm. And um, uh, Mohamed, it's the same thing as well. Mm. Mohamed is coming from, uh, he finishes uh, high school, bright student, 
wants to go and do finance, but they say your points are not going to cut it. They are very good, but your English is not quite on point, so we're going to put you BSc. What does BSc do? It chooses him and spits him out. <laughs> Fail and discontinue, but he says... You couldn't um, fit in. Yeah, I'm going to start a business. Mm. And guess what? Business is starts educating other people. So it, it really was so quite... So fail and discontinue is not the end. It's not the end. Mm. Now he is... Could be a beginning. He's passing some kids that are going and, and, and going beyond that. So he's training kids. He's training kids. He's, he's doing a great job. Okay. Yes. He's talking about this book, Cracking It. Yes. Yeah. He cracked the code. He I cracked suppose. the code. Yeah. He yeah. just like really figured it out and said, this is how I can do this. And now explain this aspect of your business, mm -hmm. co-authoring great books with successful people. So what is the thinking behind it and how far is it, how, how, how is it going? The thinking behind it is most of the times we have this, this idea of, where, maybe because of where we're coming from, it's cool to read about Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg and Oprah Winfrey, but you know what's cooler? What's cooler is reading about a guy that, whose name resonates with your name, mm. a guy that you know one day you're going to come across him. Meet you know, him in the yes, street. Yes, meet him on the street and ask him a question. Mm. It's closer home. We can relate with that, but we can't relate with things that are, you know, extremely foreign to us. Mm. So if, if, if somebody passes by, if I talked about Trump Towers, mm. it's a great idea and stuff like that, mm. but it doesn't make much sense beyond the description. Mm. But if I talked about Mohobe Plaza, <laughs> and I said, it's in CBD, you can actually go and see it, and a kid comes and looks at it and says, wow, mm. this person is like me. Mm. You see the difference? Mm. So that's what we decided. We're going to tell our own stories, and we have great stories from Africa. We have stories starting from political leadership, mm. business, anything, you name it, we have it. And the idea is to start where we are right now, and there are a lot of stories to tell. I hope one day we're gonna we're gonna get together and tell this story. <laughs> <laughs> the story of Mauve Plaza. Yes. Okay. All right. That's very flattering. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we've we've touched on purpose, but let's move on to personal culture. Yes. Can a person have culture within a culture? Yes. By that I mean you are in the Sichuana culture mm -hmm. or you are in the Khaborone culture. Mm -hmm. Can you then have a personal culture? Yeah. You can, see, can you explain that? Yeah, it's, it's, it's true. You can actually have it's a very good question actually. Because personal philosophy is, is, is the way you see the world. Mm. And how do you see the world? You see the world as you are, not as it is. Mm. So you look at yourself, you understand yourself and you look out there and you see the world as a reflection of you. And if you don't have a healthy reflection of yourself, the world is going to be cre creepy press. But if you have a good reflection of yourself, mm. the world is going to be different. So it's sort of like a software that allows you to interface with other softwares <laughs> out there. So you have, imagine as, 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 as your organization, you have a corporate culture, you have a purpose, you have a vision, mission, values, mm. and somebody comes in, they have none of theirs. How are they going to interact with the, because they have to integrate into a culture, but they don't mm. have one of their own. So it's very important at individual level to figure out where am I going, and when you are looking at what opportunities are available either in the workplace or in the world of business, you are saying, where is this trend going? Is it going in the same direction as I'm going? Is it trying to solve the same problems as I'm solving? And you put it all together, you should be able to use your personal philosophy to find a corporate philosophy, organizational or societal philosophy mm -hmm. that ties up with it. So it's easier for you mm -hmm. to integrate, to understand others, what they are doing, and to see how you can contribute effectively into what they do. But if you don't have 30 years later, like, oh, I've been here, but uh, I, I don't really know why I spend so much time here. I don't like it here. I've never liked it. Am I to understand that that personal kind of culture yes. can be, can be um, changed, amended, ref you know, corrected, or made to fit a given culture through the process of personal development? Yes, it's dynamic. You are growing. It depends on how much you know. It goes back to your, how much words you are collecting and how much you know, how much you understand. Mm -hmm. So the more you understand, if for instance, somebody was thinking, oh, I want to become a medical doctor and the, their knowledge increases a little bit. Oh, maybe I want to become a superintendent of a hospital. If it increases a little bit, maybe I want to own my own practice. Mm -hmm. So it, it just keeps growing. So this is why we say to people, if you are working on your, on your, on your, on your vision, for instance, it's a long-term thing. You want to think about everything that you think now how is it going to look like if you had all the opportunities open to you in a hundred years from now? 
So uh, you, you really sort of like really stretch it and you know, 100 is a very safe time mm -hmm. uh, considering our, our life span. If we're very lucky, 87, 90 and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, but what keeps changing now is the mission. The mission it, at a personal level has to change because it's a vocation at the end of the day. It's mm -hmm. a series of jobs, a series of skills. The world is changing. Some people wake up and they find their job has been taken away by the, by, by the computer. Yeah. And it's no longer there. They have to think about something else. Mm -hmm. So this is a variable you cannot control, but you can control what you'd like to mm -hmm. produce and, and evolve. Say, so there's so a, a continuous evolution. Yeah. The vision, the values must be steadfast. Mm. The mission, you keep working on it, yeah, otherwise yeah. you're going to be like Blackberry. <laughs> <laughs> you will be a, a, a dinosaur before you know it, yeah, if, exactly. you, if you don't adjust it. Yes. All right, that, that's a good segue into our, segue into our next point about mm. vision. Yes. Um, what is the central importance of vision in, in, in having a personal philosophy? Yeah. Where do you slot it in? It, it comes immediately after purpose, which unfortunately, we, we are all, the belief is that, and, and everything is pointing to the fact that we are born with a certain purpose wired in us. The problem is we don't come holding an instruction manual that says, for society is going to be like this. <laughs> Definitely, <laughs> so you have yeah. to figure it out on your own. Mm. This is why you find a, a, a child's life in the first five, seven years, it's mm. very hectic. They're trying out everything. Mm. They, they are trying to figure out what is my purpose. Mm. And if a parent is not observant, they're going to miss out on that. Mm. And if the child doesn't figure out what it is, it's going to be difficult. But it's something that you actually figure out by trying out a lot of things. It's, it's, uh, it's aligned to what are your gifts. It's aligned to what is it that I get very easily. What do I like naturally? And there's a purpose. So the vision comes now to focus the purpose. Because the purpose is like why you can be all over the place. I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this, but you want to be going in one direction. Mm -hmm. So the vision gives you and says, this is your true north. This is mm -hmm. where you're going to be going. It's your dream. Your biggest dream put together is going to be this. And every component of it is this, but you're going in the same direction. Mm -hmm. So you know, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. So it really focuses. The, the, you're the talking purpose. about a personal vision. Yes, your personal or you're vision. you're talking about a, uh, a personal vision. Yes, yes. 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 It focuses your life. Mm -hmm. It says you're going in this direction. It, it also in the same breath. Are you then encouraging the viewers to, to put in writing or, or somehow to have it in front of them as they, they do whatever it is they do on a daily basis? Definitely. One of the oldest structures from which we have, I mean, scriptures from which we have learned all they say is put it in writing. Mm. Put it in writing, put it How in writing book? very, very clearly so mm. that those who see it can run with you. Mm. So it must be very clear. It, it is the same with personal development is just really borrowed from the mm. scripture and, and expanded on it. You mm. need to sit down, write pages and pages of what you want your life to be like. And if you don't have it, it must be an emergency. Mm. You, it's not something that you're like, I'm going to do it next week if I get time. Mm. It's mm. something that immediately you hear about it and you know exactly what you need to do. You get started. You, you buy a small uh, notebook and, mm. and start writing down what you would like to become. Mm. So it definitely must be written down. If you don't write it down, there's something spiritual about writing. Mm. Yes, it, it synthesizes yeah. what you have learned. And yeah, so okay. it must be written down. This is where uh, some people have problem. Mission. What is the difference between vision and mission, mm. and how do you recognize it uh, if you see it? Yes. So what we've done is we've really made it, again, simple, stupid. Vision is where you are going. Mm -hmm. Mission is what you do every day to keep going in that direction. So it's, um, it's what you do every day. You, your mission. I'm going to my job. This is my mission. I'm going to do this. This is my mission. I'm going to talk to people. I'm going to... So it's, it's the things that you build. In other words, let's say it's just your career. Your mission is your career. The different mm -hmm. jobs, the different uh, skills, knowledge, skill sets and stuff like that that you actually gain to be able to continue growing in the direction that you've chosen. So mm. vision, where you are going, mission, how you get there. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, we move on to values still mm. on, as we get away from mission, talk about values. Yes. I suspect you dealt with that issue in this book, yes. Know What Matters. Exactly. What, what, what do you basically say in this book uh, without spoiling it for, for the viewers, for the viewers. Who, may, who may want to buy it. <laughs> okay. Mm. Um, values. So you have a purpose. It says know what matters. Yeah. Mm. You have a purpose. Mm. You, have, you know where you are going. 
so you know why you are here that's your purpose you know where you're going that's your that's your vision and you know what you're supposed to do every day to be going in the direction of your vision of your purpose you know that but the problem is there is so much that is competing for your attention friends social media family. these family difficulties uh, crisis like we are having right now. Mm. So all those things really have a way of persuading you whether you like it or not, have a way of persuading you from time to time from your vision like okay I'm, I'm gonna stop this, I'm gonna try and do this, mm. I'm gonna stop this, I'm gonna try and do this. Now creating a value system helps you in that it preserves your purpose mm -hmm. and then it advances your vision and your mission. How it does that is you say to yourself in the direction I want to go in the stuff that I would like to do all my life, what are the most important things that I should always bend to? Mm. So you list them down, so you have your, your values. Somebody comes to me and says, let's do something. I'm gonna check number one, does it promote lifelong learning? No. Uh, does it promote creativity? No. Does it promote integrity? No. And the answer is no. Even if the other two were correct, the answer is always no. So it's sort of like, preserves all this, it, it's, it's basically your discipline uh, system. It's the system that is going to keep you within what you're supposed to do. And those yeah, every day you wake up, every day you are doing something, every day you're making a decision, you say, is this aligned to my value system? And, and it just goes on like that. It's, it's really Still powerful. on this subject of values, you've been training a lot of people, yeah. speaking to a lot of people, mentoring a lot of people. Uh, are you able to give examples of some of your students, mentees, who have taken these things on and have embraced these ideas and made a difference in their life. And it, are you able to give one or two examples without necessarily mentioning names? Without necessarily mentioning their names? Unless you choose to. Okay, all right. Um, the, the, the one that really like is very close to, to my heart because she had to have a, do a lot of things to be able to follow her vision and stuff, the, the whole personal philosophy thing. Is a young lady called Tsepang Tibedi. She founded uh, the Spelling Bee Botswana and she's co founder oh, yeah. of the African I've heard of Spelling Bee. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we met when it was really very young, I think, seven, eight years ago, and we were very excited by the you know, energy she had. And we said, this energy needs, needs to be guided in a certain yeah, way. So we started yeah, yeah. so to mentor her, mm -hmm. and, and she's done really well. She lives by her, she doesn't fault. She lives by her value system. She follows her personal philosophy strictly, you know, she's just like, one of her mantras is that you, you can't say no to her. No means next opportunity for her. That's yeah. her mantra. That's N-O, next opportunity. Yes. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and how is she doing? And practically, how, how she, big she's is this? How successful is she? She's it? been very successful. She grew from uh, a small thing that was happening in school mm. to national. So she runs a national uh, spelling bee in Botswana. She has covered all the regions in the country. Mm. And then she's gone together with other national bees, founded, co-founded the African Bee. And she has been able to, the, her biggest uh, uh, milestone was taking some of our kids here to the, to the International B. And uh, if, had, if it had not been for, for COVID, mm. she was going to, to, to bring the African B here, which was going to be like a watershed thing. It's something that mm. uh, I'm sure they are still looking at. It's but still she working really on. has gone to dizzying heights. You look Wonderful. at it, it's like, wow, this kid. Are there any other... Um, you know, mentees that you want to blow your trumpet a little bit about? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the other one big mentee is um, is, 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 is Mwe Medi. When mm. we started working together, I really was inspired mm. with, with the work that he was doing. Mm. And uh, when we wrote the book, what we, the same things we were talking about, personal philosophy and stuff like that, we really built it into the story. So much so that it actually showed him certain angles that he didn't realize were there in, in what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And this is just an unstoppable guy. This is a guy that just works up and say, I'm going to do this. And he goes in and does it like mm -hmm. he's a born entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And that too needed to be sort of like given a bold uh, route and say, this is, this is where it's, it's going. Mm -hmm. And since we've started working together, Obviously, he might have had it in his uh, in his in his in his plans mm. uh, to go to go continental, to go global, and stuff like that. But we really have achieved a lot. And he's a steadfast person. He says, "I'm going to do something." He goes through with it. Yeah. It doesn't matter how difficult it was. Mm. He went into South Africa during COVID. 
got infected, but COVID came back, slowed down. But you know, he says, I'm gonna, it's like for him, it doesn't exist. Yeah. yeah. So he, he got COVID, recovered from COVID, yes. went back to SA, went back to SA carried SA, on with the carried business. On with the business. Talk about he, being tenacious. Yes, he's yeah. extremely like, mm. that's his middle name, actually. <laughs> tenacity, yeah. for, as far as I'm concerned, like, yeah. he's really, really yeah. tenacious. He is relentlessly. Uh, okay. When it, when it comes to, to, to pursuing his, his... There's this word mantra, yes. which you also define as attitude. Mm -hmm. um, define it and, and, and its significance. Explain that. Uh, life is... Uh, it, it, it oscillates between two extremes. Either you are very excited or you are very unhappy. And both of them need a certain kind of attitude that is constant uh, not a different attitude for being excited and a different attitude to uh, a mantra is sort of like your slogan that whatever the situation you have that's it if you are very very excited at the very zenith mm. you 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 defer to your mantra mm. if you're really down in the gutters stuck and all that mm. you still defer to the same one like for, for instance my my mantra is no matter what happens life only gets better mm -hmm. so if i'm down there and i've run out of options i can't mm -hmm. think of anything anymore I just say to myself, life only gets better. And it starts getting better. Mm -hmm. But if I also like go up... If, if it's almost like uh, this too shall pass. Yes, Whatever yes. It exactly. Is. Mm. Exactly. Mm. It's like that. And when I get excited as well, and I achieve, mm. I should be able to also say, okay, life only gets better. Don't I get carried away. I can't stop there and, and say, okay, this is it, and sit on my laurels, mm. and you know, do nothing about it, and start singing it for the, for the mm. next... I say to myself, okay, excitement is over. We need to go to the next stage. So that's, that's, that's your attitude so, towards life. So then using the mantra, how do you deal with really, really ex challenging events like a massive accident, mm -hmm. like a big loss, yes. a sudden loss of life? How do, how do you then deal with it, applying the mantra, the attitude method? It's, uh, it's the same thing. Like for me, I'm always saying, okay, after this, life has to get better. Mm -hmm. And it's really looking at what does this, what does this mean? Mm -hmm. Is it just an accident? Is it just somebody dying and that's all? Is, should there be a meaning to this? Is somebody getting involved in an accident and not being able to walk ever again? So you look for the lesson. Yes, we look for the lesson and say, why did this happen? And why mm. did this happen to us? Mm. What, what is God trying? Or the we, universe without, trying to whisper without, to without us? Without going into a pity party. Yes, without going into a pity party. Mm. So, you know, you, you need to get out of this. We need mm. to figure out what it is mm -hmm. that, that got us here okay. and, and make sense of it. Clear thinking, this one seems like a cliche. Obviously, clear thinking yeah. is important. Mm -hmm. What do you want to communicate by clear thinking? By clear thinking is after you've figured out all these things that you'd like to do and maybe you've gone ahead, like the people I've mentioned, and you've been successful and stuff like that, people would really want to know what it is that you did, what it is that you overcame, and what it is you consider your biggest achievement. Trust me. It's not the easiest of things. We, we ask people and they just say a little bit of what they have done. Mm. Not because they are not able to, but because it just didn't come out. It tried to come out all at the same time. Mm. And then it got clogged at the entrance and whatever just slipped through is what they're going to say. Mm. But it does a disservice to them and to the people that are listening to them. Mm -hmm. So what you need is, is, is a, the ability to organize your thinking in such a way that you say, okay, this is my life. I'm going to order it like this. Mm. And when somebody asks me, I'm going to give it, break it down this mm -hmm. way. So that's clear thinking. So speaking. So does uh, does does the organisation Game Changers Media assist with that? Yes, we do. And if so, how? We have created a program called Executive Speech Coaching, mm -hmm. and it's in our speech coaching the most uh, the major concept in there is clear thinking, mm -hmm. because at the root of clear thinking is 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 the ability to speak clearly. Anybody that you find is struggling to say what they would like to say. It's, it's not that they are a bad speaker, they are a bad thinker, they mm -hmm. are, they've got cluttered thinking. So we have cluttered thinking because we know everything we'd like to say, but we, we have don't muddy know thinking how to. Well. Yeah, <laughs> muddy thinking as well, yes, and yeah, yeah everything just gets clogged in there, yeah. and you, you want to separate it and put it across. Some people, people say that sometimes it's a function of not taking time out for yourself. Some even advise meditation, yes. transcendental meditation and yoga and things like that. And prayer. Mm -hmm. What do you say? How do you uh, don't, don't you think there's there's something to be said for that quiet time to be able to clear, 
think clearly. Yeah, it, it's, it's that also, because the whole world is a marketplace of ideas. Mm -hmm. And who are they assaulting? They're assaulting the individual. And for you to be able to, to not go insane, you need to be able to block all this stuff out. You need mm -hmm. to be able to keep it out. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned meditation is one of the tools that people use. Mm -hmm. uh, whichever way you, you do it, you go up the mountain, you close yourself in a room, a dark room, or you just, you just say, I'm, I'm turning off all these gadgets. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm cut off. Mm -hmm. yeah, anything that sort of like really stops this, this, this onslaught mm -hmm. is, is going to be helpful which, whichever way where you take yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Now, you want to talk about your publications yes. as we come towards the end of our discussion. Mm -hmm. um, we did touch on them, but you probably want to emphasize something. Yeah. Um, the way they are written is, uh, is very important for the reader to understand mm -hmm. because all of these books are actually written from the programs that we offer for coaching. Mm -hmm. And so what it means is they are based on feedback, because it has to relate. The people that we meet are the same people that they live with. They have the same problems as, as they do. The first book, like I said, was inspired by my need to tell people this is where mm. I got lost this in the one. wilderness. Mm. And uh, this is how it cost me a lot of time. Mm. And I was a late starter. Basically, I started at 40. And, but it, I, it, it's also to tell people yeah. if, if this hadn't happened, maybe I wouldn't have this exciting career that I'm very vibrant about. Mm. So from there, people read it and say, what do I do? So that's when I came up with Know What Matters. Know mm. What Matters is these are the things that matter in life. The mm. things like you, you need to have a philosophy, you need to have to be limitless mm. and, and, and all that stuff. But after that, it was just what really matters. They needed a how book. They still mm. come back and say, I figured out how, what, what a personal philosophy is, but how do I create my own? So that's when Access to Plenty came in. It's, it's, it's out of print. Mm. Uh, yeah, but it really talks about dreams, how you achieve your dreams. That's your third book. Yes, mm. that's my third book. And the fourth book now is to articulate if you achieve. Yes, it's to articulate whatever it is you want to achieve or your problem. People have problems, but they don't know how to say it. Mm. I could be sitting next to the person who's got a solution to what I'd like to do, mm. but if I don't know how to ask it properly, ask for it properly, that's it. That's I'm it. just going to go it. back home empty-handed. And uh, this now was trying to fulfill one of our promises, the Game Changers, that we're going to be telling stories of Africans, young and old, and in between, we have done something extraordinary that, it, that can inspire other people. Yeah, this one is about my medicine. Yeah. Hello, yeah? Yes, and, and this one is about Kenneth Karanja, also uh, yes. an entrepreneur. Okay. Yes. Um, here's part of the show now where you get to ask me a question, sir. Shoot. What one thing would you tell, what one piece of advice would you give to a seven-year-old girl? Well, I speak always in terms of girl, but it's mm. girl, boy, mm. something, yes. What, what, what one piece of advice? Um, I would actually give that to myself and to my children, the same piece of advice, that the same energy, the same relentlessness. Yes. Because when you are that age, you experiment with everything. Uh, when a child falls down, they don't say, this was too painful, I'm not doing it again. Um, at age seven, you're probably messing around with your tricycle or your bicycle, whatever it is, you're falling off. And you still have the same attitude of getting back. Mm -hmm. um, so my advice would be, don't stop. Don't allow them to tell you to stop. Don't allow the fear to come. Because normally, from age 2 to age 10, you experiment, you try everything. You are, you know, you are very, very curious. You, you're, you're, you're adventurous in your spirit. But something happens between the ages of 10 and 20. You can't do this. This is too dangerous. Don't do this. Don't try this. Hey, please, shut up. Don't, don't interrupt. You know? So your creativity is sort of the society and sometimes loving parents close you down. So I would say to, to the seven-year-old, if she would listen, don't, don't stop this. Don't carry on with this energy level and maintain it through your teenagehood, through your 20s. Yes. If I can say something, I can say that. Awesome. Mm. Yeah. I hope I've answered the question. Yes, you have. Yeah, yes, you yeah. have. All right. Um, as we conclude, I'm going to invite you to look at that camera. Okay. 
and I'm going to ask you to say some powerful, you know, takeaways. Yeah. Just one or two words, of words of wisdom, something that the viewer can really hang on to from this conversation. Yes. Yes. So the thing that I would like to tell you, the viewer, is if you don't know where you are going, you're not going to get there. If you don't have a destination, you are not going to arrive. You're going to be going in circles, so you need to find a def destination for yourself, and that is why you need to have a vision. And if you don't have a purpose, you don't have anything to stand for, and if you don't have anything to stand for, you're going to fall for anything. And that's what a lot of people do. You have a lot of energy, and people take that energy and exploit it, and after 30, 40 years of existence, you have made so many people successful, but you are still where you were or worse off. So get yourself a philosophy. Be going somewhere, always. Thank you. All right. Now, how do the viewers engage with you? Where do they find the books? What are the contact details? Um, all our books are in exclusive books and uh, all, the, all the local bookstores except, uh, except, except one. Uh, so a Bala book, you find it, uh, exclusive books, and uh, Books Botswana, they are the only place they are not there uh, in CN, CN, uh, CNA. But you can also find the books from us. You can uh, WhatsApp us or get in touch with us on 761-521-88, 761-521. 8, 8 and then you can interact with us. The same goes for our services. We are located in, in Tlokweng, just in the fringes of, uh, of Habaroni, uh, but uh, we are an international organization. We go everywhere we are needed. So do our products. And of course, social media? Social media, you find us on uh, Game Changers page. There's a lot of activity happening there, Game Changers Media. Game Changers Media, that's our page. Another page where we have a lot of activities, the Poshi Achipala, the National Leadership Campaign. Uh, you can also find us there. There's a lot of activity that we're doing there. Uh, on my personal account, it's uh, Saidi Mdala. And you just, when you get there, you'll see a lot of books. You, you'll know you, you've gotten to the right place. Thank you very much, Mr. Mdala. You're, you're, you're a wonderful guest. Thank, Thank you very you much. Thank you so much to you for All the right. opportunity. All right. I really Cheers. appreciate it. Okay.